She had a panic attack. He was the doctor that examined her. Which explains why you punched him out. It's serious, JR. He's trying to warm his way close to anybody that meant something to Babe. None of us can afford to have anything to do with him. Trust me, if he gets half a chance, that man will tear our family to shreds. Crystal? Where the hell have you been? I was at the hospital. Didn't you get my note? Yeah, I got your note. And I went to the hospital. They said that you'd been discharged hours ago. I, uh, I ran into Angie as I was leaving, and she was having a really, really bad day, so we went out and got a bite to eat. Why? Oh. Why the third degree? It's not third degree. I was scared to death. And it turns out for good reason. How on earth could you let a man like David Hayward examine you, knowing what he's done to this family? He was the cardiologist on call. So you could have gotten another cardiologist. I'm sorry. I thought I was having a heart attack, Tad. I wasn't about to be picky. Why, why the hell did you call me? I did call you. I guess you were just too busy being detective to answer your phone. You're right. I'm sorry. My fault. I should have been there for you. No, no, no. no, I, yeah, I, no I'm sorry. I don't expect you to sit around here with me 24 hours a day on the off chance I have an anxiety attack. Do you know what caused it? Was it... was it thinking about Babe? Actually, it was thinking about David. There was once a little boy, and he shouted, I have big plans. So big that he needed to get his dad's shiniest shoes and his best tie. Missing me already? She's missing you all right. Who is this? Ken, the bartender over at BJ's. You were the last number in your call history. Your friend could uh, use a little help getting home. I'll be right there. I left work today. And I went over to the Veteran Hospital in Maryland. Walking through those halls and seeing those injured soldiers, I started thinking about the ones that I lost. You know, the ones I couldn't save. And I started thinking, which is worse? Dying over there or coming back here dead inside. Is that how you feel? Dead inside? It's hard not to. I mean, you're holding these men, these... these soldiers in your arms and you're watching the life just... just slip away and... and you know there's nothing you can do about it. That changes you, Randy. I don't know who you were, before you went to the war. But I know the man who came back, the man who's sitting in front of me right now, he's a good, decent, and caring person. A man who is not afraid to admit his fears or listen to mine. And changed or not, Frankie, you're the man that I love. You had a life with Rebecca. A family. I mean, she and Natalia, they got to be with you day in and day out while Frankie and I were left to mourn your death. How do you think that makes us feel? I mean, to know that you, you were out there somewhere living the life that we were supposed to have. It wasn't safe. So you moved on. You know what? I never moved on, baby. Rebecca helped me through a really dark time. And then Natalia came along. Papel was looking for a man on his own on the run. So I found a way to blend in, keep us all safe. How naive do you think I am? I don't... Rebecca was not just a cover. You can't stay with someone all those years, have a child, and build a life, and without loving them. Admit it! 
You fell in love with Rebecca. You still love I her. I never fell in love with Rebecca. Oh, you she did. knew that. That's oh. why it didn't work. Oh, you do. You keep saying the same damn thing over and over again. Sweetheart, sweetheart, you're drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I know what I'm saying. And the lies were only a part of it. What really hurts is that you only came back because Rebecca pushed you away. Mm. Because the truth mm. is, is that if she hadn't, you would still be with her. Now you tell me. You tell me that's a lie. We were meant to be together, Angela. We spent all this time trying to get back here to this point. And now that we are, I'm planning on staying here, living every day, every minute, every hour, every second with you, if you will, at my side. You are the love of my life, Angela. And only you will ever be. You have the best of me because it was you who made me the best I can be. Oh, the love of your life is freezing. Go inside. You know, when Babe died, I... I wasn't sure I was going to be able to go on. You know, the pain just cut so deep. It was hard to breathe or think. It was hard to... Hard to feel anything except that emptiness that my baby left behind. But seeing little A, you know, having my grandson close, that almost makes the pain bearable. And not just for me, but for David, too. Wait a minute. We'll go back. For David? You, no, no, no. You're not for one minute thinking about allowing Dr. Death to be a part of that kid's life, are you? Dad, you know, no matter what I think about the man, and he is mourning a daughter that he lost years with because I, I didn't know that he was her daddy. And that's time you just can't take back. How does anybody deal with something like that? Listen, I love you more than anything. I'm telling you, Hayward is manipulating. He's playing you like a violin. He's trying to use that guilt so he can get as close as he can to little A. You, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to be fooled by David. Are you sure? You allowed him to examine you. What the hell was that about? <laughs>